we're going to be discussing gravitational fields, so uh, how to draw them, for example, how they work, as well as gravitational force of attraction. So we're going to be learning about Newton's uh, universal law of gravitation. But this one here is a little bit dumb from the movie Gravity, but that was cute. <laughs> So if we look at this one right here, what are gravitational field lines? We need to know a definition. This is really going to help us. Okay, so first of all, um, if we're going to define this, it really is just the direction that a test mass would go. So what do I mean by a test mass? That means imagine that in my hand I have a little mass. There it is. It's a test mass. And imagine you place it wherever you want. Which direction does it go? You draw an arrow in that direction and you're set. So, for example, near a gravitational body like uh, the Earth, for example, I've just drawn a little you know, piece of the sphere here. Of course, it goes around. So if I want to draw the gravitational field lines, just keep in mind it's where a mass would go. So if I was right above the surface, like let's say I placed it right here, where would it go? Well, it would fall straight down towards the center of the Earth, wouldn't it? And because of that, then, I'm going to draw then an arrow going inwards. And of course, I could draw one maybe here, and it's going to go right towards the center of the Earth. And I can draw here and put it towards the center of the Earth. Do you notice it doesn't matter how many I draw? So these right here are actually the field lines, these arrows. Now, it's a bit arbitrary because you might think, well, how many arrows do I draw? But there is a, a general rule, though, that the more arrows you draw, then the stronger the field is. So you can actually compare the two drawings. If you see one with you know twice the number of arrows, then you can assume that the gravitational field strength is twice as much. So it is relative, yes, but it's really powerful still because it tells you where objects will go. So now the gravitational field lines, they do go radially inwards. That means they go in, you know, f you know, lined up to the radius here. So they would go right into the, you know, towards the center. And um, what we're normally going to do, we're normally going to assume that a planet or a moon or a satellite or a star or whatever it is, we're going to assume that has all the mass located at the center. So we're going to assume it's like a, a point mass. That's what we're often going to do. So let's go on a little bit further and discuss gravitational force now. So we call this Newton's universal law of gravitation. And there's a reason for it, because we assume that this applies to anything in the universe. And it's a force of attraction. So anything that has mass, this thing has mass, this other thing has mass. If you have mass, then they attract always. As we say in Danish, punctum, it just means like, you know, period. So that means two masses then that are separated by a certain distance, we can actually uh, write down what is the force of attraction between them. And you don't have to memorize this. It's in your data booklet, but it goes like this. F equals G. And at least the way it looks in your data booklet goes M1, M2 over R squared. So what it tells you then is the force is proportional to, you know, the product of the masses. So in other words, mass one and mass two. It's also inversely proportional to the um, radius or sorry, not the radius, the distance between those two objects. So let's just uh, maybe define everything just to be sure. This is the force of attraction between the two objects. So it's in Newtons. Masses are in kilograms. Distances are going to be in meters. And then we have this constant G. And this is assumed to be constant everywhere in the universe. So that's why it's called the gravitational constant. And you can find this in your data booklet. It's 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Whoops, I forgot the minus there. Boop. What helps, I think, is there's, there's a slightly different variation of this equation that most people do use. So I'm going to say or. You could write it like this, F equals G. And what some people like to do, like to write a big M for like the big mass, if there's a more massive one, like the star or the sun or the planet or whatever it is. And then the little thing that's orbiting around it, you know, we normally use a lowercase m. So we often use like big M for the big mass, little m for the smaller mass. So this is also another way to write it. I personally like this way here better, and you're going to see why later in some other videos. But I mean, this still holds true. Now, I put this really stupid one here. It's awesome. Look at this. So I'm attracted to you, and according to Newton's universal law of gravitation, you're attracted to me too. <laughs> Get it? Because anything with mass is attracted. There you go. So that means that, for example, if I left you and, let's say, your friend out in outer space, let's say you had a spacesuit so you wouldn't die, I just put you out there in the absence of other gravitational fields, the two of you would actually have a force of attraction, which means, given enough time, you'd end up sticking together, so to speak, until you pushed each other away. So let's put this into context and do an example. So we've got the center of two planets that are going to be separated by distance r. So there's one planet, there's the other one. And uh, it doesn't matter which one is which. We can call this in a big M. We can call this in here a little m. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to have the distance right here between them. It's going to be r. 
All right, so what do I do with this information? Well, we're told that the force of attraction between them is F. And now the question is, what's the force between them if their separation increases to four times that? What happens to the force? Now there's two ways to do this, at least two ways that I could think of doing this. Uh, one, I think I'm gonna call it like brute force. You know, just like the, just using the equation, let's see what happens. But there's a quicker way as well. I'll show you that in a second. So one way could be brute force. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's just use the equation. We have F equals G. I'm just gonna use big M, little m over R squared. I'm putting the R because it's a capital R here like this. Um, okay. And then what I like to do then is use, you know, I make myself another equation for the new one. So like F2, you know, the new equation. So F2 is going to be, well, G still times big M times little m, they're still there, over, and this time the distance is 4R squared. Now the biggest mistake people make is they just leave it like this. Then it looks like it's just the number 4 times R squared. But this is a mistake. You have to be very, very careful when you do these. Really watch out. It's 4R, all that squared. Why do we care? Because it makes a big difference right here. Watch, it goes G M M over, and you have to do four squared R squared. Four squared is not eight, it's four times four, which is 16. So we'll do 16 R squared. So now if you look at this, then I have two equations, don't I? I have equation sort of one, I could call it, and I have equation two. And when I look at a question where, you know, we have a change in something that's going on like this, I often like to just write it as a ratio. So in other words, I'm just going to say F2, well, remember that equals GMM over 16R squared. I'm going to divide that by F, which is GMM over R squared. Now, if you've done a lot of these, you're not even going to bother writing this. You'll get a lot faster, but I'm just showing you the brute force way. So F2 over F. What happens when you have a fraction divided by a fraction? Remember, you multiply the denominator here, you multiply uh, by the reciprocal of that. So what I mean by that is the top stays the same, so it's still GMM over 16R squared, but then I multiply that by the reciprocal of this, so I flip it, so this becomes R squared over GMM. And if you look carefully, you'll see that lots cancels out. The GMMs cancel out, the R squareds cancel out, and all I'm left with is F2 over F equals 1 over 16. In other words, I can say then that F2, you know, the new force, is going to be, well, I move this F up to the top, so I have F over 16. So what it really says is, hey, that new force is only 1 16th what it was before. It should make sense, at least, that the further away you are, it should be a smaller force. Now, why did I call it the brute force? Well, because it did work. It was just long. And like I said, is if you're good at this, you'll even not even bother writing the things that are in both. You'll just ignore them. The other way is, you know, I'll just say like quicker. So how do we do this a little bit quicker? Well, we could just recognize one thing that's important. The thing that's important is that the force is proportional to, now keep in mind, the masses didn't change. We're assuming it's the same planets. So all I'm going to care about is that it's 1 over r squared. And what's the difference? What happened? Well, the distance changed, right, by four. It's four times bigger. So what could I say then? I could say, ah, that means the force is proportional to, let's see, it's going to be four squared, so that's just 16. Right? Because, well, maybe I'll just show the other step. I'll say that's four squared. So that means the force is proportional, really, to one over 16 in this case. What does that really mean then? That means that the new force is going to be one sixteenth, because you know, it's a one over 16. It's going to be one over 16th, the original force. Ta-da! So there were two ways to solve it. It doesn't matter how you get there, so long as you can get there. So what have we learned here? Well, we've learned about uh, how to draw gravitational field lines, that they always go in towards the center of the gravitational object we're looking at. And we've also learned about Newton's universal law of gravitation that talks about the attraction force between two objects with mass that are a distance apart.